refurbishing a vintage model steamboat. This is part 29 and I'm currently trying to remove the box from the stern decking. In the previous episode I showed how I removed the other box from the decking and then cut away the steel plate beneath it in order to find a suitable place to put the 2.4 GHz receiver. And it looks like I'm going to be going with plan A because when I remove this other box it's not a box at all, it's a solid block of wood with some holes drilled in it to lighten it. So the best thing to do with this is stick it back on the deck, more securely than it was originally stuck, and move on to the radio control system. The choice of 2.4 GHz radios is vast at the moment. What I did not want is a computer controlled one, with a fancy screen and lots of buttons, because the owner of this boat, and the builder of this boat, is now of a great age, and I really didn't think he would appreciate something that looked like a piece of science fiction equipment to control the boat. This set is very simple. Four gimbals for the four channels, plus a fifth switch, normally used for a retracting undercarriage, which I will use to switch the gas off. The other good thing about this set is I'm going to use it as a dry cell set. I'm not using rechargeable batteries. I am at the moment to test it, but it's much easier for the owner to just put some batteries in the boat when he goes to sail it, take the batteries out when the boat goes on show. If I put rechargeable batteries in and they do not get recharged and go totally flat, then often I find that they break down and then you have a problem or maybe the owner will forget to charge them. Buying a new set of Duracells is a simple visit to the shop and in my opinion it's a good option for a boat that's going to be sailed infrequently. Because this is not a computer set, I do not have the luxury of endpoint travel adjustment from the set. And again, this would be a problem if ever it lost its memory, because the owner would not be able to reprogram it. So everything is going to be mechanically set at the beginning, and it should never move. What I'm doing at the moment is setting the gas valve travel. A good feature of this set is you can slow down the speed of the servo on the switch. And I've done that so you can see what's happening. And it's moving too much. The servo travel is excessive, and more than the travel of the arm. So all I have to do is remove the servo arm, and put the linkage on the next hole down on the servo arm, then refit it and everything will be fine. And as I've just mentioned, nothing can then move. The servo arm will only ever be able to travel that far. And on the second hole down on the servo arm, it's perfect, as I will show you in a moment. I'm just refitting it to the servo, not forgetting the screw. But before I put the screw in, I will just test it. Yes, and that's pretty good. Poetry in motion almost. Right, I'll speed it up and try it at a higher speed. This is done by moving a switch on the front of the transmitter, which is almost impossible to move with my finger, mainly because my fingers are too big, so I have to use a screwdriver point. It's a good idea having these small switches recessed on the transmitter itself. This prevents them being moved accidentally when the transmitter is being handled. I want to test the system at high speed, no problem at all. As I also mentioned earlier, do not, under any circumstances, forget to fit the screw that holds the servo horn to the servo shaft. Failing to do this is not good, because after a while, the servo horn will fall off, and then there will be no movement of the gas valve. What I'm now doing is plugging in some of the other servos to see what's what. I need one for the regulator, one for the forward and reverse gear, and one for the rudder. And this is not a good start, that is not the one I want for the regulator. That's the regulator one, the one on the right hand side, which is normally set as the throttle, depending on which mode the transmitter is set to. You could use the left hand side one, but I prefer the throttle to be on the right, so what I'm going to do is remove the spring on the left hand gimbal. This means that it will not centre. The left hand gimbal will go up and down. It will centre left to right, which is what we need for the rudder, it would be no good if you just had that slopping about everywhere. But as I've now decided that I'm going to use the left up and down gimbal to control the forward and reverse of the engine, I was originally going to use the switch, but I thought, no, that is far better for the gas valve. So I have throttle on the right, that's right to the bottom, right to the top, and then forward on the left to the top, reverse on the left to the bottom. So when sailing the boat, you just keep the rudder stick at the top. Unless, of course, you want the boat to go backwards, then you would put the rudder stick at the bottom. 
I could really have left the spring in, but that would mean holding your finger against the spring whenever you're sailing the boat, and I've tried this in the past and it is really annoying. Once you remove this small spring from the gimbal, make sure you don't lose it, and the best thing to do is to tape it inside the case. This is masking tape, and it won't go anywhere in there. So now I can put the transmitter back together, and then quickly have a look at this gadget. This is called a Volt Watch, and it tells you the state of your battery. At the moment this battery is not brilliant, it needs charging really. It will tell me whether I should sail it or not. If it sits there with no load on the battery, it should give a green light saying perfect. If I hold on to the servo, therefore stalling the servo, there will be an excessive current drain on the battery. And this Volt Watch gadget indicates that, as you can see, that it goes into the red when I stall the servo. It's most important when you do an installation of any kind in a model plane, a boat, a car or anything, that you do not have a stalled by default installation. And this means that when the transmitter is just sat there, like it is at the moment, there should be no load on the battery. So you need to check all the end of travels and make sure that you're not pushing the servos too hard. The Volt Watch is a good indicator and allows you to do this. Another good feature of a Volt Watch is that it has variable voltage for either 4.8 or 6 volts. So if I was using a 6 volt battery, which of course I will be doing if I'm using 4 dry cells at 1.5 volts each, or if I was going to use a rechargeable pack, that would be 4.8 volts, as it contains 4 1.2 volt cells. So there is a switch on the side of the Volt Watch, which allows you to switch between these two voltages. At the moment, the gas valve servo is connected to the left hand vertical gimbal. This is for demonstration purposes, because it's very easy to see the gas valve moving. This is a regulator one moving, the long arm is for the regulator. And on the right hand stick, it's only throttle up and down. The left to right on this stick has no function. So here's the final arrangement. The left hand stick up and down, forward and reverse of the engine, with the smaller arm on the servo. Nothing on the left or right of the right hand side. And up and down operates the regulator. And the switch at the top kills the gas. It's either on or off. And that's it for the start of the radio installation. Once again, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.